Today we're going to be looking at why you need to maintain your mountain bike. Uh, now as you probably know, I love looking after my bikes. I maintain them constantly for different content here on GMBN Tech. And I like to encourage others to do the same because you get more out of you riding your bike really. Uh, but let's face it, I know that not everyone likes to look after their bikes. And actually some people insist that you don't even need to maintain your bike to get the most out of it. So we're going to turn things around a bit and instead of filming my bike today for this video, we're going to look at Jack the cameraman's bike, which he doesn't know about no, yet. That wasn't in this script. <laughs> so his bike is used and abused constantly, and I bet money it's not been maintained as well as it should do. So hopefully there's going to be a few lessons in here for everyone. Shimano asked me to make a video highlighting the importance of maintaining a bike. Uh, problem is, my bikes are always really well maintained, so not the best examples to use. Now, all the crew behind the scenes, they all ride here at GMBN, and we have a fleet of bikes for them to use. This particular bike, an Orbea, um, Jack's riding at the moment, but this one was actually out with me and Josh in Italy for two weeks, um, riding at the EWS 1 and 2, and it's also, I think, been to Scotland as well, so it has been thrashed. Now, I know that some of the crew look after their bikes, and some of them treat them a bit like hire cars, so I suspect there's a few things on here that we can all learn from. Okay, let's get this out What of here. are you doing with that? That's well, I know what I'm is. doing. Right, tell us, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Jack. I'm a filmmaker for GMBN. My job is to follow the guys wherever they go and help make the YouTube videos that you see on the channel. Uh, tell us about the sort of maintenance you do on the bikes that you use. Uh, I basically wash it when it needs washing and lube the chain when it needs lubing, basically. Uh, it's not that much in a way of maintenance, is it? No, but I don't really see why you take so long. If something breaks, then I'll fix it. But realistically, it just works most of the time. Ah, oh, this is hurting my OCD. Right, th it's not the best way of doing it. Right, so let's have a look at your bike and we'll figure out what's going on here. Right, let's have a little blast on it and see how she feels. Oh god, what the hell is that? I'm not even going to attempt to jump this thing. Right, front brake, yeah, that is no good. That comes to the bars. Um, okay. <laughs> Do you even use this for your brake? Um, gears are a little stiff. Nothing a bit of lube on that cable won't cure, I'm sure. I think that makes out of line, actually. That doesn't feel right. Yeah, that is that is not on. Jack? Yeah? I mean, the chain on is pretty dry at the moment. What sort of lube do you use on it? Uh, the spray one. You use the spray lube? Yeah. All right, so I reckon you've contaminated that rotor. That's got a horrible sort of squeal, and that's not just like a wet disc, it's not wet in it. That's, if you've contaminated that, that's probably new pads, and I reckon a rotor as well. Gears are a little bit out. Can't tell what that is. We'll get it in the work stand. Front brake definitely needs a bit of bleeding. It's just a little bit of air in there. Fairly common for that to happen, especially with traveling. Actually, it's something that's not mentioned much. In traveling, because of the fluctuations of altitude, it is possible for air to work its way into brakes, any brakes. So you should be checking your brakes when you get the bike out of a bike bag, either end, just for safety. It's not bad, but everyone's had it when a lever comes to the bar and it sort of pumps up a bit. So that needs looking at. Your handlebar's not even straight, by the way, and your controls aren't even in line. That just, that makes my head want to explode. Um, yeah, and something's still a little bit rattly. So let's go back to base. Let's get this in the work stand and we'll figure out everything that needs a bit of adjustment on here. Okay, so here is the news. We've got a bike in the work stand. I've gone over this and seen what needs a bit of work. It's quite a lot of things. So first up, starting at the shock, there's something loose here, as you might be able to hear bit of rattling, so I'm going to whip that shock off, check the hardware on there, make sure that's good. Drop a post needs a bit of lube in here, that's super dry, so we're going to take care of that. Same with the forks up front. Out back, that cassette is knackered. The chain is beyond even like the worst recommendation. The chain wear tool just drops straight in, so that's got to be replaced. Rear mech cable, um, well that needs changing because that's frayed anyway, and it's quite stiff in the housing, so I suggest there's water got in there. The shifting's not quite right, but I'm going to figure that out as I get to it when I change that cable on there. I noticed a couple of loose spokes as well, so I'm going to nip those up, keep on top of those. Rear tire's a little bit softer than the front, so I'm just going to have a check to see if that needs a sealant top up. Um, pretty aware that these bikes, they go through that stuff. 
Uh, so that needs looking at. Front brake needs bleeding on there as well. And of course the final thing out back, a uh, new fresh rotor on there and brake pads. So everything I'm about to do is covered in a whole number of videos here, but I'm gonna work back to front. Always have a method when you're working on your bike. So we know we need to do the chain of cassette, the rear disc rotor and the brake. So starting by getting the wheel off, and we'll tackle everything out back and work up to the front. Okay, so first thing first, get the cassette off. Now the cool thing with Shimano stuff is it's all interchangeable. Now you might have noticed that this particular cassette on here is an XTR one. Uh, mega expensive, mega lightweight. It's obviously been worn out in a few months from like just ridiculously hard riding by all of our camera crew. So I'm gonna save us a bit of cash and put an SLX one on instead. If they're going through stuff that quickly, there's just no point having the super high end race stuff. So out goes the nice super lightweight and rather expensive XCR cassette, and we're gonna bung on an SLX one, but everything else we're gonna pretty much swap like for like, because that is all good stuff. You could actually say that putting this cassette on might be better for our creators. Uh, the reason I say that is they're gonna be spending a lot of time in the low gears, because they're running heavy camera bags with tripods and stuff. Uh, now the lower gears, i.e. the bigger sprockets, on the XCR one, the top three are made from alloy. On an XT, the top two are made from alloy. On an SLX, only the top one is made from alloy, the rest is steel. So arguably steel is a better choice for them anyway, and it saves that money, so all good stuff. We've changed the cassette, now it's time to uh, flip it over and change that disc rotor. Now don't forget there's two major types of disc rotor, you get six bolt and you get center lock like this one. When you're changing a rotor, make sure that you don't get your fingers or anything greasy and oily anywhere near that braking surface. So this is the contaminated rotor. Now, arguably you can recover these, but it's not always guaranteed. So the safest option is to replace the rotor with the brakes. But if you were to try and recover yours at home, uh, clean these down with some boiling water. Uh, use anything you can, preferably something like a disc brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol to remove any trace of anything. Uh, again, screaming hot water again afterwards. And then you want to rough up the surface with some real coarse emery paper, uh, glass paper, something like that, giving basically the brake pads the best chance of bedding in again. One more essential safety tip for maintenance with disc rotors, you should be testing the thickness from time to time, which is something that I don't think many people actually are that aware of. So typically a brake rotor like this, the thickness will be around 1.85 millimeters thick. Some other brands use thicker ones. Um, you want to double check this, for example, uh, but a Shimano is a 1.85 millimeters thick. And as they wear, they're obviously going to get actually slightly thinner. Now they do say on the actual rotor themselves, minimum thickness, you see uh, min thickness there, 1.5. So if it gets to 1.5, you 100% need to replace these because obviously you're gonna get through that braking surface. Uh, it's a safety product, isn't it, at the end of the day? Next job, get those brake pads replaced. Uh, same thing applies as does with the disc rotors. Make sure you don't get oily hands, fingers, anything like that near the actual braking surface, the actual pad itself. So simple case of removing the little split ring here. Uh, take the pin out, take the spring out, and remove the old pads there. When it comes to replacing the new pads, you've got different choices of what goes in on your bike. You can have resin pads, organic pads, you can have metal sintered pads. In Shimano's case, you can choose if you wanna have the vented pads, uh, the ones that have got the heat fins on them to help dissipate the heat. They work brilliantly, but they're not always essential because of the fact we don't always have access to a super long descent. So if you're a rider riding in flat areas, you don't need to, you can save yourself the expense and go for the regular brake pads. Bit of a shame really that we've actually got to replace these pads because there's plenty of life left on these. Again, you can just about resurrect some pads, but given it's a safety item and I don't know who's gonna be riding this bike, for argument's sake, fresh pads, fresh rotors. Now, usually I'd finish off out back here, but whilst the wheel is off the bike, gives me an opportunity to really sort of feel where the problem's coming from with that shock. If I move the back end, you can feel there's a slight bit of play in there. And I can actually see it's moving slightly here. So it's one of two things, either this bolt is loose or the actual hardware, the bush that goes that sits inside the shock body there uh, is basically worn or perished. So I'm gonna loosen the two shock bolts, take the shock out just to inspect it uh, to make sure it looks good. And then I'm gonna refit it and put some fresh thread lock on both those bolts. So I've just been inspecting the shock itself. It's obviously in fine condition. Uh, it's a fairly new bike here, despite the miles it's done. The actual bushings themselves are fine. So I've got a fresh one here. I was prepared to swap those out, but actually they're in really good condition. There's no excess movement here. The only movement on the shock itself was actually that rear bolt. So it suggests it just rattled loose over time. So I'm gonna put that back in with a fresh bit of medium thread lock. 
Uh, important to use medium thread lock and stuff like this. Never use the red, like high strength stuff because you can damage it. Uh, you could damage the bolt head by trying to remove it afterwards. It's only to stop it rattling loose. It doesn't need to be cranked up silly tight. Yeah, no movement, happy with that. Um, last job out back is to get this rear mech sorted. So obviously I wanna have the chain on the bike and a wheel into index the gears, but whilst we're here, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to replace that cable, uh, flush through a bit of oil through the housing there, just so we know the shifting is gonna be really good and stay that way, hopefully. There's no hard and fast rule about replacing tire sealant. It's gonna be different for all types of riders, conditions, the tires. Uh, but when it's dried up, you need to replace it. So I'm just gonna have a little inspection on the inside here because I feel like this one is dried up. So replacing your tire sealant or topping up can be quite a messy affair. It's something I actually like to do directly through the valve on my own wheels, but I didn't know how much was in this wheel, so I actually needed to inspect it. As you can see, there's a little bit in there, but it's mostly dried up, so uh, that is doing its job, essentially, uh, repairing punctures on the go. So I'm gonna free pour a fair bit in here because uh, I'm betting that Jack and the other guys when they ride this bike, they're gonna ride it pretty hard and they probably won't be checking the tire sealant levels. So just as I was wiping off the excess sealant from the tire sidewall, I noticed a crease on the rim here. Uh, so that might explain why the sealant was dried up. It would have burped out uh, when it impacted a rock or whatever it was. Uh, the tire has sealed absolutely fine, so I'm pleased with that. But that does totally explain why that spoke it's completely loose, so I'm just gonna nip that one up. Uh, the wheel is actually true, so it just suggests that that one's just unwound itself due to that impact. If you're unsure, if this sort of thing happens, you definitely take your wheel to the bike shop because you don't wanna mess up your wheels. Okay, so wheel back on, then we're gonna get the chain on, then we're gonna index those gears, make sure everything is working nice and smoothly. Okay, so the mech isn't that bad. The lower jockey cage was slightly bent, so I've just twisted it a bit. You've gotta be super careful if you do that. It was slightly out of adjustment, but the reason it was out of adjustment, which I think no one noticed, was the actual hanger bolt was slightly loose. So that would have made the gears go out, and I think people adjusted the limit screws, like someone riding this at some point, to cater for that without checking this. So if your gears go out, the first thing to check is the barrel adjuster on there. The second thing is actually to check your mech hasn't unwound itself. Uh, it's not that uncommon if riding loads of rough trails for these to come a little bit loose. It's not perfect, but that's pretty good considering you can visually see that that lower cage is, I think it's twisted slightly. Okay, back end is pretty much done. I've topped up on sealant. I've sorted the spokes out that we just lose, replaced that rotor, replaced the pads and set the pistons again. Um, change the cassette, change the chain. Now I've just put a new gear cable on. I'm just gonna trim it down and put a fresh ferrule on the end there, or end cap even. And then I've got a couple more bits to do at the front of the bike. I'm gonna put a bit of suspension lube on that dropper post just to get it working a bit smoother. Uh, I'm also gonna do the same for the seals on the fork and then just do a quick bleed on that front brake and then the bike should be pretty much pristine. Depending on the model dropper post you've got, there's a couple of different things you can do here just to improve things. Something you can do on all posts is put a small bit of oil. Uh, suspension oil is the best thing to use for this on this effective stanchion surface here. Uh, push the dropper post up and down a few times to so actuate it. And if there's any dirt and grit that's in within that seal, it should stop pulling it out. So you can just uh, onto the oily surface, give that a good clean, uh, put a bit of fresh oil, again, cycle it through a couple more times, clean it, and then it will be working a bit smoother. In the case of this one though, I've already done that, but I'm actually gonna add some oil under that seal head just to make it work a little bit smoother. Just actuating the post, just to uh, make sure it's pulled out any grime that sits under the seal there. Uh, feels a bit smoother now, which is all good. That's the name of the game. I'm just gonna do a little refresher on the fork seals as well. So there's a few ways you can do this. If you've got like a spray silicon lubricant, something like that, you can spray it directly onto the fork stanchions. Be super careful if you can use the spray because it could go near your disc brake. Uh, of course, that will render your brake written off. You'd have to get new brake pads in there if that's the case. Basically drop some oil on the fork stanchions, cycle the fork through travel a few times. If there's any muck directly under the seals, it should pull that muck out, give it a good wipe off, apply a bit more fresh, compress it a few times and clean it. And they'll definitely feel that a little bit more supple. Last thing to do is just to bleed that front brake. Now I do suspect I might be able to get away with just doing a little lever bleed here um, rather than a full system bleed. So let's give that a go. And if that doesn't work, I'll do a full bleed, but I reckon 
we'll get that feeling good. So because of the way the funnel goes directly into the lever on Shimano brakes, if there's any air immediately in the top of the brake, it's super easy for those air bubbles to migrate out. So it's possible whilst leaving your wheel in the bike, if you're extremely careful, to just put the funnel on with some fluid in there and gently just tap your brake line. And if there's any air immediately at the top and by flicking that lever, you can just let those air, air migrate out and the brake should return to feeling how it should do. Uh, it's just a quick little cheeky lever bleed that you can do in between full system bleeds. And uh, yeah, it tops up on the brake feeling as it should do. Okay, so the bike that didn't need any maintenance needed quite a lot of maintenance, it turns out. Uh, so my easy answer is yes, you do need to maintain bikes. Uh, this one is done for now. The back brake does need bedding in though. So let's get this back to you, Jack. Um, let's get out for a quick ride and just see how things are feeling. All right then, Jack, give it a go. All let's, right. Uh, let's see how the bike's feeling now. It's going to be much better. Go in. Ooh, it sounds better. That was good. It even sounds better. Huh? Come on, tell me that is smoother. It's a lot smoother. There's not enough, not as much rattling as there was previously. <laughs> you know, all right, so other than the chain, uh, which can't really help it, bikes shouldn't generally rattle. So um, I don't know if I told you when we were, when I was looking at the bike earlier, but the shock was actually loose. So it's through no fault of anyone. It's just one of those things that actually people need to pay attention to. The shock mount bolts, you need Loctite on those or thread lock on those because let's face it, you're riding really rowdy terrain in the mountains, that stuff can just work loose. Um, yeah, so we've basically given it a bit of love all round and um, well, it's in better condition it was, that's for sure. Now here's a quick breakdown of what we spent on this bike. Now bear in mind that there are labor charges associated with things like changing the chain of cassette or bleeding a brake, for example. But bear in mind, if you get on top of this sort of stuff and you don't want to sort of maintain the bike yourself, when you take your bike for a general service, if things like the brake pads need replacing, there won't be an additional cost for that. It will be covered within the service. So just take these things on board. And also bear in mind, labor costs are reflected on the time spent by the mechanic working on the bike. So it's gonna differ wherever you go. These are just guideline prices. Now we should talk a little bit about service intervals for your bike. Now typically you want to allow for a service annually on a bike. That is a once over the entire bike, making sure everything is working as it should do, checking the brakes are bled, the transmission, all that sort of stuff. But at the very least, you want to be making sure your chain is not stretched and worn. You want to be making sure your brake pads are safe and doing a bolt check on the bike. Now that is something that we can all pretty much do ourselves with a few basic tools. Okay, well, what have you learned from this video then? Essentially, yes, you do need to maintain your bike, uh, whether it's on a very basic level or with more advanced skills. Uh, it's up to you if you want to do this stuff at home. If you do, we've got loads of videos on all of this stuff. Uh, easy to follow if you're confident working on your bikes. Failing that, your local bike shop is there for you. They're a fountain of mechanical knowledge, so uh, take use of that stuff. All the things I've done to this bike, there's going to be single videos for those in the description underneath. Uh, fixing the rear mech, the chain, the cassette, lubing the seat post, the fork seals, all that sort of stuff is going to be down there if you want to follow any of those to help yourself out. Uh, but don't forget, be smart with your bike maintenance as well. So keep an eye on your chain wear. It can save you money. If things are starting to get loose, that can lead to other problems on the bike. It's a knock-on effect. So just take your time after you wash your bike, just give, you know, 10 minute once over the bike, just make sure everything's safe and it's good for next time you head to the trails. Uh, hopefully this video has been helpful for you um, and I think it probably has to Jack behind the camera there as well. Um, hit us up in the comments if there's anything you want us to make and give us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. ta -ra.